I'm going to talk about the 6.8 Westerner. <coughs> I get a fair number of inquiries about this. I'm going to give you the honest dope on this whole situation here. I'm going to start off by saying that in the last number of years here, about a handful of years or maybe a little longer. We've got off track considerably here with bullets. We've got some awful nice bullets and so forth with a high BC. But the first thing that you need to be aware of, this high BC doesn't mean that that is a bullet. It's a good game bullet. Almost invariably, with some of these latest develop developments to do with cartridges and high ballistics coefficient bullets, we've got bullets with considerably thin jackets. Yeah, they've got a high ballistics coefficient, but basically what's being canceled out here is the construction of the bullet is lacking along with a lot of these high ballistics coefficient bullets. We've got terminal performance to some extent, but what we have here is a bullet that just isn't as capable as some of the bullets that we've had in the past. And these thin jacketed bullets invariably all have a plastic tip. And the plastic tip gives it some of its aerodynamic ability downrange. And yeah, it carries just a little bit flatter. But really that's quite a moot point. We've come a, a considerably long, long ways with optics. We have optics that we're able to turn a dial and adjust for our elevation for yardage correction. In a lot of scopes, we've got reticle systems. Irregardless, this is all a very, very narrow point that, that trying to hang their hat on here. For instance, the 6.8 Westerner. I just got done reading an article here in a magazine, Shooting Sports Retailer. I get this because I'm in the business. And one of our writers, longtime writers, he does a good job of writing and so forth. Wayne Van Zoll has got an article here about the 6.8 Westerner. And I'm going to cut right to the chase. I'm going to read right from the article here. He compares various bullet weights in the 6.8 Westerner to our 270 Winchester. Now I'm going to start off and point out what he's loaded here. 270 Winchester 150 grain ballistic silver tip. Now this bullet has got a fairly high ballistics coefficient but here we are again. We've got a bullet that's just a ballistic tip. This is not what we want. But we've got pretty good velocity here with a 150 grain bullet out of a 270 Winchester. 3,120 feet a second. Now let's run down here to 500 yards and the energy is 1,631 foot-pounds of energy. 1,631 foot-pounds of energy. Now let's go to the 6.8 Westerner. Let's go to 165 grain Nosler Acubon long range. 
That started out at 2,970 feet a second, which is 150 feet a second slower than the 270 Winchester with 150 grain. Let's go down here to our energy. The energy is 1,856 foot-pounds of energy at 500 yards. We'll also compare 175 grain Sierra Pro Hunter and this proved to me years ago, I mean years and years ago, many years ago, you know, when they first came out basically with this bullet, it was one of the poorest damn game bullets that was ever supposed game bullets that ever come down the pike. Now this bullet starts out at 2835 feet a second and we've got 1771 foot-pounds energy. Yeah, we've got 100 to 150 foot-pounds more energy. But we don't have a game bullet. It's not what we want. It didn't it didn't work many years ago, but just because we've got a different cartridge case now in the 6.8 Westerner, slightly, than what we've had in the past, now we're made to believe that we've got something that's special. The real honest truth is, the 6.8 Westerner is nothing but a 270 Winchester with different bullets and a different twist rate of barrel, an 8 inch twist barrel instead of a 10 inch twist barrel. Now, I have built many, many 270s, many 270 Weatherby's, and a lot of other 270s of various different case configurations. And what we have here is a cartridge that they're trying to sell it on about 100 foot pounds on an average of more energy at that distance. The only reason that it has is because of this poorly designed bullet in construction, but has a high BC. Now, you see, we need to have both. If we're going to take advantage of the high BC and have a good quality bullet that's going to perform on game, we've got to have the construction. The construction's not there. It's all canceled out. It's all canceled out because of this. What we should have and what should be going on, and I build quite a few of these, is the 270 Weatherby. The 270 Weatherby is the 270 cartridge as far as I'm concerned for this day and age. It's always been a wonderful cartridge, but with the proper bullets, with the proper bullets and a 270 Weatherby Magnum, and the proper twist, instead of a 10 inch twist, or the old original 270 Weatherby's had a 12 inch twist, instead of that, those twist barrels, we need an 8 inch twist barrel. Now, you see, we can get a considerable gain out of the 270 Weatherby with these higher ballistics coefficient bullets, with these heavier weight bullets. But still, at the same time, we're still in the same situation. Now the bullet that should be promoted here, the real game bullet that should be promoted is the 160 grain Nosler partition in a 270. Yes, this bullet doesn't have as high a ballistics coefficient, but this is the point, folks. Ballistics coefficient doesn't kill the game. It's the construction of the bullet and the placement of the bullet that does the job. Now I've used enough of these lighter constructed bullets with these high BCs and so forth and I hunt primarily to put meat in the freezer and if I get a trophy in the process that's a bonus. Now I don't want to lose a quarter of my of my elk, a quarter of my deer. I don't want to lose it because I hunt hard and game's hard to find and it's disappearing every year. 
There's so much competition for our game, especially in country that's just completely overrun with, with large predators just killing everything right and left. So you're going to get the honest dope from me. Now the one thing about this article that Wayne Van Zoll wrote here, he states that it starts out, the cartridge starts out pretty slow, the 6.8 Westerner. That's absolutely true. That's the only real, real true part of this. And we have to have a cartridge that's a, that's a, cart, a good capable cartridge at longer range, five, six hundred yards, that starts out at better velocity than eight, twenty, eight hundred and some odd feet a second. We need a cartridge by all means that's going to start out the bullet to get that downrange energy that we need with properly constructed bullets, we need to start out at around 3,100 feet a second or more, 3,200 feet a second. Irregardless of what the caliber is and so forth, we need to start the bullets at that kind of velocity. Otherwise, we don't have it. And these are the things that are not pointed out. Everybody just starts talking and blabbing and blabbing, but they don't know what the real score is. Roy Weatherby basically put the Magnums on the map, really, 70 some odd years ago with what we had then. And all those cartridges that Roy designed and tested and all parts of the world extensively with poorly constructed bullets he did what he could do then but you can do so much better now with those same cartridges with a properly constructed bullet and I've shot a lot a lot of these long-range acubons working up loads in various calibers and in a rifle, in a rifle chamber that's designed properly, a rifle chamber throat that's designed properly for the bullet because you've got to get those bullets near the rifling or they just won't shoot at all. I've got some outstanding accuracy and I've killed game but I haven't killed them what I consider far. I've killed game with these long with these long range acubons in 30 caliber out to 464 yards and I've killed game you know in 7 millimeter out to right right at 300 yards elk you know full size elk and the bullets really destroy a lot of meat those bullets, those thinly constructed bullets, thinly constructed in the fore portion of the bullet, in the nose of the bullet, so they'll expand at long range. That's exactly what, what, what has to be done, is to thin a bullet down in the nose to expand at long range. But it's not the bullet that you want to shoot at two and three hundred yards. Five, six, seven, eight hundred yards. That's where the bullets come in to shine, but here again, we need to limit ourselves to, to actually what we're doing, not only with bullets, but to yardage. Now, er, right early on, the fellow from Winchester that dreamed up the 6.8 Westerner, very inexperienced person, as far as in the game field, and really what works stated that now we've got a 270 Winchester that you know six seven hundred eight yard cartridge oh man this is absolutely ridiculous never shot ahead of game in his whole life at that distance with anything but here he is telling us this you know it's really too bad I've been on the kills of you know more game than you can ever imagine. Numbers over a thousand. 
game that I've taken, families taken, friends have taken, clients when I guided, one thing or another, over a period of, of 57 years. I know what works. You just don't go to a drawing board and come up with something and don't go to the field and then tell us that you've got a seven or eight hundred yard elk cartridge just because it's got a high BC. You know? And this is in all areas. People don't understand. People don't pay attention. They don't realize what's going on here. And this is part of why we're having poor results in some of these instances with, with game shooting, not recovering game, shooting too far. This whole thing has encouraged people to shoot much, much, much too far. And they never get the game recovered. That in itself proves that there's a problem. Now, the ballistic coefficient is just a number. All it is is a number. And that ballistic coefficient is not constant. It never has been and it never will be. It's not constant. That ballistic coefficient is changing many, many times in downrange flight. So, there, and there's no way, there's no way under a hunting situation that you can un be even begin to understand according to weather conditions and all sorts of things involved what's really going on there in the flight of that bullet. These are the things that I've been talking about since we started our series of trying to educate folks what's really going on here. And I'm not, I'm not held by the nap of the neck to pray something by some company, by Winchester or Remington or Federal or whoever it might happen to be. I'm not held to that. They don't do, any, they don't, they don't do anything for me. And that's and, the thing that's come up in questions often is who are our sponsors and who pays us to say good things about them. The answer is nobody. I don't, I don't sit here and talk at great length and try to explain these things to you just for the heck of it. Nobody pays us. No, absolutely nobody, absolutely nobody. I base everything that I talk about on actual doing and actual experience. I'm not writing and getting paid, writing articles and getting paid by a magazine or many magazines and whatnot. Nobody sponsors anything. There's nobody that sponsors a thing that we do. We sponsor ourselves and we're offering this out here to the shooting world day after day, year after year, the honest truth of what's going on here. These are the things that we need to be paying attention to. That's why I say I'm not held by the nap of the neck, you know. My wonderful, wonderful friend Les Bowman, very, very experienced and a very understanding individual, you know, he was connected fairly close to various arms companies, especially to Remington. And, you know, if Remington said it, oh hell, it was gospel. No, I'm just telling you the truth. They had a, they had a hold of less, you know. A guy that was as smart as he was, as experienced in the game field, very few could ever, ever replace him. I've went past where he was considerably because we've made all these changes and all these advances and all these things, you, know, you see. But for everything that has been added to one side of the picture, like the ballistics coefficient, we also have a minus side. 
and that minus side has been in the construction of these bullets. Now, yeah, we've got more energy because of that BC, but we have to have bullet construction to go along with it. And I don't believe that as long as, as any of us are alive, that we're ever going to see that we're ever going to see a bullet that's the ideal bullet to satisfy this, this need that's being promoted by this extreme long range situation and I know what's happening I'm very close to the pulse of that whole situation I've been involved in the shooting industry for my entire lifetime doing these things and testing these things and I just give you the honest dope day after day nobody's nobody's got a hold of me because they're sponsoring me and because I say something you see or don't say something that pleases somebody and then they cut my sponsorship no I control what I say and I control what's put out here because nobody is, you know, pushing my button. And I just had something relayed to me here just in the past weeks. You know, an, an individual, an individual that was hunting somewhere, you know, here in Wyoming, not far from here. And now these fellas, these fellas were given you know, to the best of my knowledge, you know, they were probably given these rifles and Browning sponsored them. They were shooting, they were shooting 6.8 Westerners and they shot an elk at 440 yards, if my memory serves me correctly, and the elk stood there. And after a while, the elk swapped sides and, and directions, and he was shot again within a, a few inches of where he was shot from the, the other side for the, with the first time, and the elk still stood there. Now this is with this one of the one of these wonderful loads, with this for the 6.8 Westerner. Now this was a guided hunt. Now this isn't the only rifle that was long. It wasn't the only caliber or only cartridge that somebody was shooting. And anyway, to kind of cut to the point here, it ends up that this elk was shot five times. Now this elk never went down. He never went down for good until the person walked in, walked in close, and I'm talking about inside of a couple hundred yards, and knew where his rifle was zeroed and everything. He wasn't making poor hits. He was making extremely good hits, but using the wrong, the wrong projectiles for the purpose. Out here in the field, sponsored by somebody, sponsored by Browning, you know. And anyway, finished that elk with a shot at the base of the head and neck with a single shot, that was the fish shot, that's what killed the elk. Now, if we can't finish, if we can't take care of an elk with four good bodily hits, then uh, how in the world, at that distance, how in the world does this cartridge become a six, seven, or eight hundred yard elk cartridge when it couldn't do the job at that distance? Fact of the matter, it's not. Now, Here's the thing, one of the people that happened to be along on this hunt happened to be carrying a 338 Winchester Magnum loaded with good bullets and that, that man had a shot at within about 30 yards of the same distance and he shot that elk and all four legs just went out from underneath that elk and he just flopped on the ground deader than hell and the comment was from this guide that was guiding him guide and outfitter that was guiding him now 
That's a real elk cartridge. This is a real elk cartridge. Now this is what the difference is between some of these things that are being promoted and what really works. And yep, the 338 is a real elk cartridge. And you can load you can load a, a huge variety of bullets in a 338 Winchester Magnum that aren't necessarily, you know, the same sort of thing shooting a, a 270 caliber because we've got a 338 diameter bullet. We can use bullets in that cartridge that aren't quite as tough, but when that bullet hits, it hits with authority, it hits with thump, and it kills game. And anybody that's done very dang much hunting and hunted with any of the 338 cartridges from that cartridge on up to some of our biggest 338s that there are, you quick find out that, that the 338 is big medicine and it really works. It really does a job. So I don't know, I don't know whether Browning is still sponsoring that situation. But it's too bad, you see, to go out on the, the limb here with these situations. And on that single hunt, proof was made, proof was shown what really works. It wasn't very much in favor of this 6.8 Westerner. It turned out that the tables were turned in favor of the 338 Winchester. You get it?